What's up, everybody, and welcome back to A Beer A Day with TK. It's a beautiful, sunny afternoon here in Finley, Ohio, and I'm hanging out in the beer shed, getting ready to check out a new beer. Now, as today is Wednesday, you know what that means, WTF Wednesday. For those of you who may be new to the program, WTF Wednesday is the one day a week when I showcase a beer that I normally wouldn't. Sometimes this means we take on stuff from the big boys, Bud Miller and Coors. Um, sometimes we do strange offering from macro breweries, like the pickle beers we've done in the past. And today I'm going to do one from Penguin City Brewing out of Youngstown, Ohio, called Holy Cannoli. Now you might say, what's so weird or interesting about a, a cannoli-inspired stout, TK? And I'll say, well, this one is actually brewed in collaboration with One Hot Cookie. So this is a collabo between, I mean, I guess a cookie company is a bakery, right? And then a brewery, which is pretty neat. Now, cannolis are not something that I generally have. I have to admit I'm of the Irish persuasion, so I don't need a lot of Italian kind of goodies like this. I know a lot of people dig them, um, but, you know, I'm hoping that this is kind of tastes like it's supposed to. Now, I will say this. I was up in Youngstown a few weeks ago. I went out to the OCCJE um, research conference is a criminal justice conference for a group that I'm a part of and the hotel we were at was only about three blocks away from Penguin City Brewing so I could just walk out the hotel and straight over to the brewery and I did that and had quite a few beers over there it was really an amazing space it's a massive looks like an industrial space up at the top you can see kind of uh, machinery I don't know what they used to assemble in there but it looks like something huge uh, now it's massive open space they had a stage they had big tables like you'd see at Oktoberfest, quite a few beers, and the prices were amazing. I think the average pints were like five, six bucks, which in the craft brewing scene is pretty cheap. Um, I'm in Northwest Ohio. Most of the places around here, you're probably paying between seven and nine a pint, depending on what you're drinking. Actually, some of them might not even be pints if you're doing the higher alcohol stuff. So to be able to get stuff for five, six bucks was refreshing. The staff was really cool. Um, one girl, Jazz, I think it was Jasmine who waited on us, was really awesome, was really kind, and helped me get a, a shirt for my wife and some beers to go. So they had to-go beers, and they weren't crazy priced either, which was really refreshing. So this one, like I said, uh, Holy Cannoli Pastry Stout, 5.8% ABV, 27 IBUs. We've got a little bit of a blurb here on the side. It says this is a limited edition beer. Holy Cannoli Stout, our second collaboration with One Hot Cookie, is a pastry stout with vanilla, cinnamon, and chocolate. I like all of those. One Hot Cookie started in 2013 in downtown Youngstown as a side hustle for Bergen Giordani, a single mother to her daughter Morgan. Today, the mother-daughter duo grew that side hustle from a 400-square-foot store to owning and operating a portfolio of brands that includes One Hot Cookie, uh, OH Donut Company, BGMG Marketing, and their latest venture, Sweet Sips, a mobile bar company. So it looks like that mother-daughter team stepped their game up and are doing quite well. I will say this was also interesting. When I was at the Penguin City Brewery, they had a, a truck outside that was doing Medi Mediterranean food, like kebabs and all that kind of stuff, um, gyros and all that. And then they had another um, kind of truck thing. There was like a giant trailer that was a mobile cigar lounge. I've never seen anything like that before. Uh, but it was a big lounge with leather chairs and all this stuff, and people were out there smoking cigars. So that was kind of unique. Uh, wish I'd had more time to stay there. I think we came in on Thursday evening, so I went over there Thursday, and then we had to leave Friday to come home. Um, so I didn't have a ton of time to check it out. And being it was a Thursday during finals week, you know, it wasn't super busy. But it looked like a really great spot. So let's check this bad boy out. 5.80 ABV, so nothing too crazy going on there. As it's an afternoon stout, I don't want anything 10 and 11 percent. All right. So, um, again, artwork, kind of just neat, kind of like an art deco kind of look to it there. I'll throw the can up, obviously. Uh, as far as the color, Brew HQ chart. Now, it's a bit overcast in the shed here, just because of where the lighting is in the afternoon. And I would say that this is probably not black. I'm probably going more like maybe 33 or 34. It looks like a... a, like a, a Dark, rich chocolate color almost, like a, a brownish chocolate. Head had about a finger, a finger and a half of it. Looked like it was tan. It's doing the fish eye bubbles on it. Um, so the, the head's hanging around the bit. I mean, it's dissipating, but not super quickly. Looks all right. Let's give it a sniff. Ooh. This smells like dessert in a glass. Definitely pick up chocolate. Uh, for me, it smells almost like a roasty kind of chocolate, like a, like a dark chocolate kind of smell. 
maybe a bit of cinnamon, a bit of something else going on in there. Yeah, it's giving off some coffee vibes too. Yeah, it smells good. Let's give it a shot. Cheers. It's enough sniffing, you know. Body, medium bodied. Um, for a stout, probably could be a little bit thicker, but it's okay. It's serviceable with the body as a medium as it is now. I'd say it's on the lower end of medium, but it's decent. Almost giving me a Guinness vibe on the body. Not quite as light as Guinness, but more on that end of the spectrum. Taste. First thing you get is chocolate right off the bat. As soon as you drink it, you get a nice chocolate taste. It's kind of strange because it almost tastes like you get a little bit of dark chocolate, but then it gets sweeter as well. You do pick up some vanilla, and I think the, the cinnamon is kind of more, you feel it in your mouth. It's like, it's not really a burn, but you know when you have, when you eat cinnamon or you drink something with cinnamon in it, you kind of feel it on your lips. It's like a little bit of a residual um, spiciness. That's kind of what I'm picking up. Now, again, self-admittedly, I'm not a big cannoli fan. Um, I think that they have like, do they have like mascarpone cheese in them or something like that? I'm not a fan of any kind of desserts with cheese or creams or whatever it is, some kind of stuff I get. So I don't, I don't usually see these kind of things. But I will say this, for a dessert stout, pastry stout, this hits the market as a really good beer. You pick up a lot of the flavors as it says on the can, which again, obviously I'm assuming are the cannoli flavors there. So it delivers on what it says that it does. Um, only criticism, body is a, a little bit light, but other than that, this is a knockout. So for me, holy cannoli stout, big thumbs up. I'm thrilled to finally be able to visit Penguin City. I've seen them on my Facebook post forever as ads, um, but I don't see any of their beers on the shelves out here. I guess the distribution is more the other side of the state than here. So thrilled to be able to finally try this and thrilled that I actually enjoyed it, especially given it's a limited edition collab. Uh, so big thumbs up for Penguin City. Hopefully you liked the video. If you do, give me a thumbs up, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please hit subscribe. And as always, if you got any comments or questions, jump in down below. Have you had any other beers from Penguin City? I think I still have one of the gold nails in the fridge that I'll do a review on as well. I just want to spread them out a little bit. So if you have some other Penguin City ones, let me know what else I should be looking for. Hey, until next time, cheers.